Bills to legalize and to regulate medical marijuana are under consideration in both Illinois and Missouri. The Illinois legislation, sponsored by a former Madison County prosecutor, seems to stand a relatively good chance in Springfield. Not so much in Missouri, though. Seventeen or so Missouri lawmakers have co-sponsored a medical marijuana bill. This past week, our guest went to Jefferson City to talk to state lawmakers about the bill. He's returned, but returned with a fairly pessimistic report. Joining us now is Don Yarber. Don is mayor of Cottleville. That is a growing community between St. Peter's and O'Fallon. He was elected an alderman in Cottleville in 2003 and mayor in 2005. Mr. Mayor, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Charles. All right, before we get to the specifics of your going to Jefferson City, Talk to me about uh, how someone like you came to be involved in the medical marijuana uh, fight and legislation. How did well, that come about? Well, it's really easy. About 16 years ago, my wife was di uh, diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a happy ending to this story. She's doing fine now. She's doing fine. But uh, she was uh, prescribed some medicines that, that had just terrible side effects. And after reading the bottle and all the information that was provided, um, the, the drug was Compazine, and the, the side effects uh, are, can be permanent. And it's involuntary uh, muscle movements, facial tics, and the scary part is that it can be uh, permanent. Now, one of the, uh, the effects, side effects of Compazine is nausea, but in reality it's, being, it's also described, uh, or prescribed far nausea. So there's a real contradiction there. And, uh, so we, uh, it, it scared us to the fa away from it. So how did marijuana come into the picture? You well, know, I medical a, marijuana recommended by somebody? Yes, I have a friend, a dear friend in, in uh, Florida who recommended He had had personal experience with his brother, and so we followed up on it, and the results were fantastic. What were the results? Well, it, normally, we were living in North County at the time. She would, on, on the return trip from getting her chemotherapy, we, I'd have to stop the car several times to let her uh, vomit. And mm -hmm. so um, what we would do, she would take the marijuana and take a couple puffs of it before and a couple uh, puffs after the treatment, and she was now ready to go eat. So it was really, it was a dramatic difference. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, it's a very humiliating disease, uh, in particular for a woman. First mm -hmm. off, you've introduced the word cancer into your life. Uh, you're, you're fearful that you're going to lose your loved one. And uh, it's, it's a depressing thing. She's losing her hair, her appetite. Food was tasting metallic. This changed everything. Picked up her mood, picked up her appetite, need the strength to fight uh, to recover your health. So it was kind of an easy story. So because of that experience, you became involved in the medical marijuana uh, legislation here in Missouri. Now, you have got a couple of measures on the ballot come April in right. Cottleville, non-binding, that's completely right. advisory. What are they? Well, first off, we're asking the, uh, the uh, residents uh, of Cottleville to uh, whether they approve of what we're doing, basically, whether they think that we should uh, legalize it, uh, the uh, medicinal use of it. Secondly, asking if we should, uh, if they would like the state legislatures to put it on a statewide ballot. So, in other words, number one, do you think that medical marijuana should be legalized and regulated in Missouri? And number two, do you think that the proposition about medical marijuana should be put on the ballot, I guess, this coming November in the 2010 elections? Yeah. Now, those are advisory and they're non-binding, sort of right. a sense of what the population feels. You, the, the medical marijuana legislation in Jeff City co-sponsored 16, 17 lawmakers. That's right. And you went there this past week to, to talk to some lawmakers, to lobby them, and just say, look, here's my experience, here's why we think this would be a good idea. And when we spoke on the phone after you came back, you said, well, mm -hmm, yeah. it could have been better. Right. Um, what was the general reception you got? Well, very nice. We, we met with uh, uh, Ron Richards, uh, his aide, who's the Speaker of the House. Uh, he couldn't have been nicer, gave us some good advice uh, that we need more sponsorship. Uh, you know, 16 or 17 out of, what is there, 150 or so uh, different uh, sponsors that are available, those are the people we have to go after. We've got our work cut out for us. Now, I, I find it interesting that in Illinois, the medical marijuana legislation is partially co-sponsored by Bill Haney, who is formerly the chief prosecutor, the state's attorney. 
right. in Madison County who prosecuted a number of cases. And he said, number one, I think prosecuting marijuana cases is a diversion of, of resources, but this is not about legalizing marijuana. It's about legalizing medical marijuana. And he said, from a law enforcement point of view, this makes perfect sense, and I see no problem with it. No such reaction, I guess, from the majority of lawmakers in Jeff City. Are they just sort of, are they dead set against it, or are they sort of timidly waiting on the sidelines for more people to come forward? Well, I think they're timidly waiting on the sidelines, and that's why I, I feel like I've come up with the perfect solution in that they can uh, let the voters decide. That way they're not endorsing it, and yet they're not stopping it, uh, blocking the, the, the voter to express his opinion on it. Yeah. How do the folks in Cottleville feel about this? I mean, uh, they don't look at you like you've you know, opened a bong shop or anything, do they? No. they, they think, uh, do they think this is a reasonable thing for them to weigh in on? Well, we'll find out in April. <laughs> but but I, I have to say that the response, as far as the emails, uh, I have not had one adverse, one negative email from a resident. I've had a lot of positive ones. Why the opposition? Is it because marijuana itself remains federally a schedule one drug something that goes back to the thirties with no recognized medicinal use even though i believe thirteen states have legalized marijuana and, uh, medical marijuana and a number of others have given a sense that they would like to until but federal law prevents it charles i believe there are several reasons uh... and and one of them i i think the state of california which has legalized it i think that uh, it's out of control there i know that we here in missouri can do a better job it's been reported in the paper that there are more marijuana shops in uh, California than there are Starbucks. And you know how many Starbucks there are. So, uh, but I, I think just the word marijuana scares people. Uh, it's not for everyone. And it, it's, uh, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out in April. I, I feel confident that it's going to go over. Uh, but again, we'll see. You know, you said something interesting that you felt it was more instead of, you know, hardline opposition that this is the devil's weed, that people are just sort of timidly sitting back waiting for somebody else to go forward on that. Um, so I guess the sense is everybody's saying, oh, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I'm sure not going to put it forward. I mean, is that the sense you got that, yeah, yes. it's probably not that bad, but I'm sure not going to put my name on it. Absolutely. And they're afraid, what, right. of a backlash from the voters somehow? Yeah, I, and I think that really there's an opportunity to gain some votes. Now, it may be a wash. You might lose some, you might gain some. But I've had, uh, I've had several, uh, and I will not name them, uh, I'll re respect their, their uh, privacy on it, but some elected officials who have told me after the next election, I'm going to speak out on it. Uh, so <laughs> as, know, long as, as long as it doesn't cause me to express any views or yes. exhibit any political courage, I'm yeah. all for it. I'll give you money as long as it doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. Same thing. So basically, it's not like you and your wife are sitting around smoking reefer. You haven't, uh, she hasn't smoked no. it since the disease. That's right. It's not like you're calling for the legalization of marijuana. This is strictly limited and very tightly regulated. Um, what was the most optimistic thing you came back from Jefferson City with, that everybody's sort of twiddling their thumbs? Did you get a feeling that there could be a breakout on this issue? Or, or no? no, I wish I could say that I came away with a lot of optimism, but I, but I did feel that I came out with more direction on what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is more yeah. lawmakers? Right. We have to have more, and that's the, the people who are involved in this. They have to contact their representatives and get them to support it. So uh, you, you're pessimistic after the trip from Jeff City, but long term, are you optimistic that, that this is the right thing and enough people will sign on to it? I know that we're in Missouri and that we're very conservative, which uh, I, I have a lot of conservative uh, traits myself, but I think that we're still probably five years minimum away from legalizing it. I, you know, one, Charles, uh, it was uh, uh, in the St. Uh, Louis Business Review, they did a, uh, they asked, question whether it should be legalized in Missouri. There were 1,600, 1600 people responded. 72% were in favor of it, which um, I thought it was... Maybe a case, once again, where the politicians are behind how the majority of their constituents feel. I believe they are in this case. Well, let's see. Mayor Don Yarber of Cottleville. Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming in. We Thank appreciate you. your time.